thrusted to the fore. The subject matter is that of cremation. We, were, we have been catapulted to discuss candidly this subject matter, especially in view of the current affairs of the demise and the cremation of the centurion and a stickler of the Anglican Church, Orthodoxy and Praxis, Charles Mugane Njonjo, the first African Attorney General and the Minister for Justice and Constitutional Affairs. This was a committed Anglican and an Anglican churchman par excellence, and yet he was cremated. We also remember with nostalgic memories that the second African Archbishop, Manasseh Curia, is grace the most reverend Manasseh Curia, was also cremated. Also, the controversial member of parliament and former minister for labor, Peter Habega Okondo, was cremated. And I want to say that cremation has always elicited mixed reactions. There are those who cannot condone the practice, terming it as foreign, un-African, alien, untenable. And there are those who welcome it and say it's the most better way of disposing of the body of the loved ones. I am aware that this topic is not easy and we are supposed to tread carefully when we discuss about the bodies of the loved ones. But allow me to discuss this topic on two particular fronts, from the African perspective and from the biblical perspective. The message that we must get is that our discussion of cremation should be authentically biblical and authentically African. I want to say that um, cremation is not explicitly mentioned in the Bible. They are very sparse reference to cremation. And the person who was cremated in the Bible was Saul, King Saul, in the book of First Samuel, chapter 31. And I must say that he was cremated because his body, his body after he was killed by the Philistine, rather after he committed suicide, the Philistine sought to embarrass the children of Israel and King Saul. So they mutilated part of his body and took the heads. But brave men went and recovered part of his body. And since it was shameful for King Saul to have died in the hands of the Gentiles and the Philistines, and it was considered ceremoniously unclean, they had to cremate his body before burying his bones. Secondly, the other references to cremation in the Bible are on people who committed capital offenses and crimes and their bodies were burned as a source of punishment. You remember Achan in the book of Joshua and other instances like in the prophets where people were burned and because of capital offenses. Therefore, there is a negative connotation. And I want to say the standard Jewish practice that is akin to the African practice, and most of the African practices have been influenced by Christianity. The standard Jewish practice was burying people. Egyptians used to mummify people and put them in tombs where they stayed and they removed the entrails and left the person to be preserved for years and ages, especially the kings and the pharaohs.
But the standard Jewish practice was to bury people in either caves or tombs, family caves. You remember Abraham bought land from the Hittite and buried the wife Sarah. He was also buried in the same cave that he bought. We find that uh, burial is the standard Jewish practice. And also, it is a practice that has been adopted by the Africans. You remember that before the coming of the white man, before coming of the gospel, some people were thrown and left to the hyenas to eat them up to the early 1900s. Therefore, burial is a practice that has the Western and even Christian influence. But I like to say that the Bible from the onset does not explicitly prescribe a burial practice that is biblical. You will find it that it is very interesting that some people have prescribed certain postures, but I must say categorically that the Bible has not explicitly stated the modus operandi or the way, the modus operandi of doing burial. I would like to concur with the words of John Wesley. John, John Wesley, the father of Methodism, and he was a great evangelist. They say that in all matters, in all matters, in all matters, he said that in all matters, in all essential doctrines, in all essential doctrines, unity. Those are the saving doctrines. But in all non-essential doctrines, liberty. I concur with him. And I think in the issue of burial, liberty should be considered. For there is no burial that is more Christian than the other. I must say that I have been an Anglican priest for quite a long time. We have buried certain people in sitting postures, some sleeping sideways, some looking up, upward, the yonder. And uh, we have had some buried strangely and bizarrely at night. All these practices have their cultural connotations. But I like to say that uh, the Christian ideal is that all burial should be done with the dignity and love of the loved one, and it should be done with respect and dignity to the man who has passed on. For we are aware that we are all made in the image and the likeness of God. But I must say that uh, why do people object to bury, to, to cremation? Some people object to cremation because they think that, uh, that the body that is burned and is uh, dissolved into ashes will not be tenable for it to be resurrected. But this position is not only unbiblical, but it is also illogical. For also the buried bodies will dissolve and they will decompose. Therefore, this position does not hold any water whatsoever. The second position is that it is a cultural practice. Burial has been a cultural practice of the African since time immemorial. The truth of the matter is that before the advent of the missionaries, maybe burial was not done in the same way, with the same procedure. Because some people are just left to be eaten by hyenas. Some people left a home that a person passed on. Therefore, I must submit to you that the concept that burial has been African since time immemorial is not tenable, neither is it feasible. Allow me to say that culture is dynamic and ever-changing. And it adapts new practice just as it adapts. It adapted the Western practice of burial, and uh, it will continue to evolve. There were Africans who were doing it, and the Europeans came and, do it, and did it. And that's why you have, you have in many mission stations, you have 
burial sites. They were burial places. And it was considered that most of the people are buried in the church awaiting the resurrection. They'll wake up from there. These days we have had people who have been buried in church buildings. Like I remember Bishop Cornelius Corir was baptized inside the cathedral where he served for a long time. Others have been buried in different places. Therefore, the culture of burial and the tradition will always be dynamic. It is only the word of God that is immutable. But culture is beautiful and ever-changing with the passage of time and situation, especially in the moment with the, with the, with the, with the limited space and uh, with the population, most of the people prefer burial. The far cremation. There are also people who do not desire wrangles and uh, bitter wrangles pitching each, each, each family member. Therefore, they resort in their will to put it clearly that it is cremation. And I like to say that even in African culture, people's wills were respected. And I must say that. Uh, the Bible does not condone or condemn cremation. But as we look at uh, Genesis chapter 18, verses 1, the place where uh, Abraham told God, we are dust and ashes. That could be a tacit approval of the Bible for both burial and cremation. And I like to say that uh, that passage of scripture in Genesis, the book of the beginnings, even in burials, that's where the beginnings are. Even in cremation, that is where the beginnings are. When Abraham confessed that we are both dust and ashes, it implies that both burials could be accepted. Cremation and the burial. Both methods of disposing of the bodies could be accepted by the Christian. But I must hasten to say that it must be done with dignity. And we must be aware that during this, the resurrection of the body, God in his enormous power and immense power is going to reconstitute the body as it was. Human beings think that it is not tenable, but I want to say by the divine power is able to do it. Therefore, I want to challenge this position that they say that uh, burial, the bodies that are cremated cannot be subject to resurrection. This position is untenable, not necessarily supported by Christianity or the Christian doctrines as subscribed in the Bible. And I want to say even to say that uh, burial is necessarily African, cannot be conclusively substantiated. Therefore, we must say that cremation is a reality. We respect the wishes, and the church conducts the rites with the dignity, comforts the family, whatever the position that they have taken, without any stigmatization or without over-dramatization. We must say that it is a difficult time and we must embrace this new norm. So long as you don't force anybody to be buried or to be cremated. Number two, let's respect their wishes. And number three, let us embrace the fact that African culture is dynamic and ever changing. And then lastly, I'd like to say, in all these difficult times, what we should tell people and remind people is the place where people go. In, uh, in Christian theology, in personal eschatology, we remind the people that uh, the body will dissolve, the body will slip, but the soul is conscious. The soul is immortal. The soul is conscious and it exists, and according to my understanding, is capable, according to scripture and African experience, is capable of interacting and communicating by divine permission to the living. And it is possible as Samuel did in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 28. It is a subject matter that I have discussed at length in my 
seminal work, my doctoral dissertation is on exploring the challenges and remedies of interpreting the doctrine of the intermediate state of death from an African perspective. Sometimes we have equated what is Western to be Christian. But I want to say the mode of disposal of the body was not a critical issue to the African. But where the soul went, to the living dead, or to the intermediate state, remember, the Russians in the African went to be with the ancestors. The people who did not commit sins and atrocities went to be ancestors. The other ones disappeared. In the Christian cycle, the other souls go to Hades, a place of temporal, a place of punishment, awaiting the final or the eternal state. Therefore, this is just a recap over the other clip that I made on the topic of cremation. And I want to say this, the way you understand it will be affected by how you understand the doctrine of God's image in man. God's image in man is not the physical body, but it is on creativity, it is on immortality, it is on the personality of an individual. Therefore, we have not lost God's image, even if a person is cremated. We are still made in the image and the likeness of God, which cannot be lost by the fires of cremation. All the families should not be stigmatized Church will condone, pray for them, remind them that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. May we pray for the families that have lost their loved ones and whatever mode of disposal of the body that they intend to do, we should encourage them to grieve, to accept the reality and to live with hope and faith and confidence in God. May the Lord comfort the bereaved, those who have lost loved ones. May he give us hope and may he give us the Christian light so that we might, so that we might not stigmatize or, or, or structurize any member who decide to do cremation. May the Lord bless you and may he be with you. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.